All right, The Legend of Korra. Now that The Last Airbender is done, I'm really keen to get into this. Now, this show has always been a bit of an enigma to me. I've always been aware of its existence, but I know next to nothing about it, which is quite a contrast to The Last Airbender because I did know a little bit about the show before going into it. I was pretty familiar with a lot of the characters already. But with Korra, the only things I know is that this is set 70-ish years after The Last Airbender, Korra is the next avatar, right? And she comes from the, the water tribe, right? And that's all I know. It came out in 2012, I believe. So four years after The Last Airbender. So I'm hoping and assuming I'm going to see a pretty significant increase in the animation quality. But I'm really excited for this. I've heard a lot of good things about Korra. Lots of debate, obviously, between The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra, which is better. I'm going to do my best not to compare the two because based on what I've heard and just my general vibe going into this, obviously they come from the same universe, the Avatar universe but they are very different shows you know i've gotten the vibe that there's a lot of different tones about Korra compared to the last airbender and i think the last airbender as a show in general is probably pretty untouchable and it's probably not fair to any show no matter how similar to compare it to the last airbender because it's that good so this is going to be a fun experience it's going to be really cool to see what's going on in the world of Korra. i imagine at the very least or i hope we've been living in that era of peace that fire lord zuko and avatar ang have hopefully been able to bring about to the world. That's pretty much my only hope going into this and expectation. I don't really know if we're going to see too many old characters from The Last Airbender in this. The fact that Korra is alive and existing uh, obviously means that Aang is probably no longer in this world. I mean, 70 years, look, we had some pretty old characters in The Last Airbender, you know, like Boomy. So I don't think it would be too crazy to expect to see some of our old characters in this show. I'm not going to get too attached to that. Whatever comes about is what comes about. And one last thing before I get into episode one here. Thank you all so much for your support and all of your comments on my finale video for The Last Airbender. It was epic. I don't think I've ever gotten so many comments on one video and that many views within a couple of days. So I really appreciate that. And I'm glad it was for The Last Airbender as well. Like I've said many times, it was a show that I've always wanted to watch and I'm glad it came out as a pretty decent video as well. So with all that being said, it's time for The Legend of Korra. I'm still yet to read uh, the comics as well after The Last Airbender. Please let me know if I should do that ASAP or not before getting too deep into Korra. I'm hoping to get uh, pretty far ahead with this series uh, on Patreon in the coming weeks as well. So look out for that. Like and subscribe. Check out the Patreon for early access if you're interested. And with all that being said, enjoy the video. Earth. Oh, it's so weird it not being Katara's voice, but this is pretty cool. Is that an older Aang? Water. And maybe fire was when Roku. I, was I didn't old, see who was Earth. Oh, look at this. Aang told me the story oh. how he and his friends heroically ended the oh, look at them. war. The so this is Aang's son, Aang and Katara's son, I imagine. Peace and oh, look at this. Republic City. Republic City. Wow, it looks Avatar fantastic. But sadly, his time in this world oh, there he came is. to an end. The cycle of the Avatar began anew. And that's Korra. Here it is. Dude, that was, whew, I actually got chills a little bit there. That was a pretty epic intro. Book one, air. Here we go. Oh, I love that it's air. That's really cool. Which is interesting because I imagine Korra would go water to earth, right? Water, earth, fire, air? Book one is air. Interesting. White Lotus. Is that Korra? Korra, please come in here. Oh. <laughs> These are her parents. She's giving me tough energy. Oh, wow. Dude, she's already bending everything. Oh, good transition. Hey, she's a bit of a badass, man. Dude, it looks really good as well. Dude, she's a she's a demon. Let's go, Cora. She lacks restraint. She has the hair loopies, man. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Lax restraint. We should be celebrating. Three elements down, one to go. Oh, this is what we're doing. Okay, that's why this book is air. You've excelled at the physical side of bending, but completely ignored the spiritual side. Mm, okay. I haven't ignored it. It just doesn't come as easy to me. But that's why I should start training with Tenzin immediately. Tenzin. Do you believe she's ready, Master Katara? 
Yeah. It is Katara. Anyone can teach you what she needs to learn. It's Tenzin. It's kind of sad knowing that Aang's not in the world though. Katara's still here. Yes, finally. Lots of contrasts already, which I really like. Oh, look at Katara. Oh, it's so yeah, weird, but it's so cool. I could go <gasps> Firebender butt, and I passed. Oh my god, it's like a polar dog. Is this her Arpa? I got a feeling Tenzin might be, uh, if he's gonna be the airbending trainer. Hang on, Katara san. Naga, go. That a girl. Go, go, go. Oh, classic. Avatar always comes in with the, the epic soundtracks. Yes, Iki. As I've been telling you, Arpa? Hey, yo. Finally, here. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I can't tell you how happy I am to see you. Please help me. Are, are these his children? Unhand me, strange woman. That's strange woman. Milo. Yeah. Little Ang. <laughs> Looks like a little Ang. It's obviously not a little Ang. I've been reading all about your old grand grand. I've been dying to ask you, what happened to Zuko's mom? Oh, they know. Incredible tale. Grand grand, you look old. How old are you? And why is it so cold in the South Pole? And then can oh my you gosh. move with water bedding and chase us? Wouldn't that be fun? Huh? Wouldn't it? I'm exhausted. Be careful now. Oh my god, another child? Stop doting on me. I'm not helpless. I'm just They're, they're throwing so much at me here. Were Tenzin and his siblings this Lots of likable characters him? already. Aya and Boomy certainly were, but Tenzin has They named a kid Boomy, man. God, you can really see Aang Call? in Tenzin, hey. Look at you. So big and strong. You're not staying, are you? Ah. Uh, I'm afraid not. She has to go with him? No, you're supposed to move here. Uh, you're supposed to teach me. I'm sorry, Korra. Hmm. I have a responsibility to Republic City. I'm one of its leaders, and the situation there is very unstable right now. Okay, I think I have to pay attention to this stuff. Believe me, I'd be happy to find another airbending master, but you're the only one. Right, of course. That would make sense. If you can't stay here, then I'll go back to Republic City with you. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Avatar Ang tasked us with keeping you safe while you mastered the four elements. Hmm. But it's not the right time for you to come to the city. Whatever. Oogie? Yip yip. It's not Appa, it's Oogie. But we still get a yip yip. All right, so she didn't get to go with him yet. Maybe she goes off by herself, man. I don't know. Yeah, she's trying to go. Is someone gonna stop her? Nice night for an escape, isn't it? Katara knows. I have to find my own path as the Avatar. I know you do. Oh, it's like Grand Grand, man. My brother and many of my friends are gone. Oh, Sokka's gone. Oh, kind of hits a bit. Take on the responsibility of keeping peace and balance in the world. I like this handover though. Mom, Dad, I'll miss you. We love you so much. See, Aang had pretty much no family, but you can see how many people Korra has around her at the very beginning. Oh, they've got cars. Yo, a lot's happened in 70 years. This track is doing stuff too. So now I'm starting to wonder who are the antagonists, you know? What's the problem that's going on? Oh, yeah. Kind of reminds me of Arcane a little bit. I, I know Arcane's animation is very unique, but it looks really cool. Oh, there he is. Look at him. So much older, man. So is Aang going to be to Korra what Roku was to Aang? That's going to be fun. We'll take one of everything, please. That'll be 20 you want. Uh, I don't have any money. Don't pull the Avatar card. Good. We humble. Don't worry, girl. City's huge. I bet we can find a place to rustle up something to eat. There you go. Oh, it's so crazy that she can already do three of the bendings, man. Uh, say, think I can get one of them tasty smelling fishies? Is this guy homeless? I thought everyone in the city was living it up. <laughs> hey, you got a lot to learn, newcomer. Hey, you! Stop! You can't fish here! Oh, here we go. It feels so much more modern. Now with the big city looking the way it is and, and all of this stuff. Are you tired of living under the tyranny of benders? Then join the equalists. The bending elite of this city have forced- Okay, no is this what we doing? Class citizens. Hmm, there's a class division? But how deep is this? Let me guess, you're a bender. Yeah, I am. 
And I bet you just love to knock me off this platform with some water bending, huh? I'm seriously thinking about it. Good, good. Benders like this girl only use her power to oppress us. Yeah. What? I'm not oppressing anyone. You're, you're oppressing yourself. <laughs> I mean, look, we'll see how deep this runs. It's probably too early for me to form an opinion on that yet. You should get moving, young lady. It isn't safe. Hmm. Okay, who this? I feel like I should know that. Is that meant to be like a lion turtle or something? Protect what in the world? Scar. Okay, is this what we're doing? Why does this guy have a scar on his face, man? My friend here is not a music lover. And of course he's a firebender. Or else? Or else what, hoodlum? Talk to him, Cora. I love Korra's vibe, man. You're in triple threat triad territory. Triple threat triad. You're the only ones who are going to need a hospital. And for your sake, I <laughs> She said, call an ambulance, find. but not for me. Why don't you come and find out? Sit down. Hey, yo. And she's not pulling any punches. <laughs> Can she firebend too? Could she be? Yeah, you already know. Look, she's doing a bit of damage. No restraint. That's going to be a big theme, I think. Okay, she's doing she's doing a lot. Not afraid to fight. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, we got ODM gear? Oh, did Toph just teach a whole bunch of people how to metal bend? I caught the bad guys for you, officers. Oh. Arrest them. I feel like they might take Cora as well. I'm not going to lie. You're under arrest too. Now, there might be some bending rules or something, you know, that she's not following, but she did a lot of damage. They were smashing up a shop. From the looks of it, you smashed up a lot more than that. Right, now we're... Okay. Oh, Naga. Well, now we're fighting uh, the police. I don't know how to explain this track, but it's very fitting for what's going on. Bro, these guys are awesome. These are like the new Dai Li. Yeah, you can tell she's got a lot to figure out uh, about the world and how to exist outside of the water tribe. Okay, here we go. Oh. Multiple counts of destruction of private and city property. Oh, it's the goat. Oh, dude, every time I see an old character, it, it gives me chills, man. But there were some thugs threatening a helpless shopkeeper, and I had it. It's my duty to help people. See, I'm the avatar. Oh, I am well aware of who you are. Yeah. It's not the same as 70 years ago. All right, fine. Then I want to talk to whoever's in charge. You're talking to her. I'm oh. Chief Beifong. Oh! Beifong? A Toph descendant? You're Toph's daughter! What of it? Avatar Aang and your mother were friends. They saved the world together. That's ancient history. And it's got diddly squat to do with the mess you're in right yeah, now. Yeah, big emphasis on these are different times. Chief, Councilman Oh, Townsend dude, is here. the metal bending. Let him in. Look at this dude. Tenzin. I mean, she shouldn't even be here, right? I didn't think he was going to be happy about this to begin with. You are looking radiant as usual. Cut the garbage, Tenzin. <laughs> Why is the Avatar in Republic City? The Avatar will be heading back to the South Pole immediately, where she will stay put. Fine. Get her out of my Tenzin's city. a real one. Always a pleasure, Lynn. Let's go, Cora. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of Sokka that one time, man. You blatantly disobeyed my wishes and the orders of the White Lotus. White Lotus. She said my destiny is in Republic City. Don't bring my mother into this. <laughs> what was that? Being cooped up and hidden away from the world isn't helping me become a better avatar. I saw a lot of the city today and it's totally out of whack. Yep, I yep. understand now why you Ah, understand. good. I like Republic this. I like this. It does need you, but it needs me too. You yeah, he knows she's right. That's crazy, cause cause that's his dad. We're gonna see Zuko, man. We're gonna see Zuko. Are you coming to live with us on the island? No, I'm sorry, Iki. 
I have to go home. Aww. I have done my best to guide Republic City towards the dream my father had for it. But you are right. It has fallen out of balance since he passed. Ah. Uh, but you. Yes. Exactly. You may stay and train airbending here with me. Republic City needs. Dude, its his ears are huge. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, look at the little homies. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ooh, okay. This is giving Bossing the Say energy. Oh, wow. The, the press conference? I'm Korra, your new avatar. Does this mean you've moved to Republic City? Were you trying to send a message to the Triads yesterday? Oh, this would, I, I'd hate this. All I know is Avatar Aang meant for this city to be the center of peace and balance in the world. Good, good. I believe we can make his dream a reality. And I that's all you had to say. You. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, who's listening? The Avatar has arrived early. It looks like we'll have to accelerate our plan. Oh, this is the guy. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Hey, hey, that's a fantastic pilot, man. I am thoroughly impressed and incredibly excited. They really packed a lot into that. You really get thrown into the world of Korra very, very quickly, which is really good because shows like uh, Hunter Hunter, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood that I've really enjoyed, they've done the same thing. It gives you an incredible amount to think about early. And I think there's a lot to unpack from that. There are a lot of uh, similarities and callbacks to The Last Airbender because that is the core audience that they're trying to appeal to, obviously. But you can already see the direction and the difference that that Cora is uh, trying to take as well. Alrighty, so right off the bat, you're thrown into a, a very different situation than the start of The Last Ember. I, I won't try and make this so much as a comparison. It's more just highlighting the contrasts between the two shows. So Aang only knew airbending, right? Uh, all of his family, his friends, they were all gone. He had to start from scratch pretty much. And Cora, she came out of the womb just about knowing how to not just waterbend, but earthbend and firebend as well. And they emphasized this point early that a lot of the physical parts of bending really come to her naturally, but it's the spiritual side that she is lacking in. And Aang, as a monk, he was very spiritual. There, there were a lot of interactions with Aang, you know, in the spirit world, but with Roku, even being in the avatar state, you know, before he'd even touched any of the other bending disciplines, you know? So you can see the contrast between the two characters. And it's almost like we get to experience this side of the avatar that we didn't get to experience with Aang. Korra's got an entire family. She's got her whole parents. I, I know Tenzin's not really related to her. But I imagine uh, Katara was Korra's master in learning waterbending. I, I love that. And Katara and Aang's son, Tenzin, uh, and his children well, would be the only airbenders to exist right now, unless Aang and Katara had more children. And I imagine Korra feels pretty damn close to that family. Like Tenzin, Katara, you know, all of their children as well. And the world itself is so different. It's been a long time and a very different era. There's not that big overarching looming feeling of the war and Sozin's comet, everything that's happened in the past you know, it feels very different. And they give us a really good glimpse of what the city looks like. This must have felt so surreal to people who saw The Last Airbender and then four years later, this comes out and you're seeing a lot of familiar characters and concepts, but in a very different world, a very modern city with a lot of modern concepts. Like there's early stages of cars and cameras, even the whole press conference situation, that, that was so different. Like The Last Airbender felt very, very, I'm not too good at my history, but it felt very like olden times, it kind of of stuff it is the best way for me to put it and this is obviously much more modern but they put a lot of emphasis on Korra's lack of restraint right she absolutely demolishes those fire bendings in her fire bending training at the start of the episode as well as probably doing a little bit too much to those three crooks I guess uh, when she did make it to the Republic City and that's another stark contrast to Aang who was very passive he would do what needed to be done but he was never one to really you know do that much especially in this kind of situation where there's a lot of collateral damage like to the city seeing Katara being so willing to let Korra go knowing it was the right time it just made it feel exactly like when Grand Grand was willing to let Sokka and Katara go off with Aang you know felt like a really big full circle moment it, it, it's so cool seeing Katara still in the show but it really hurts knowing that Aang and Sokka are, are no longer with her but she still has family right she still has Tenzin and her three soon to be four grandchildren who seem like some pretty uh, crazy kids there's lots of different personalities 
personalities among those kids. There was that one kid who for sure has ADHD. That kid was crazy. Kind of reminded and sounded to me a little bit like Toph. Yo, and one of Tenzin's children asking Katara, what happened to Zuko's mom? That is the funniest shit. I don't know when the comics came out, if they came out before Korra, but when Katara says it's a pretty epic tale, maybe that's telling us to, to go and read the comics or something, but that's so funny because that was the biggest open end of The Last Airbender to me. That's hilarious. Seeing the statue of Toph, man, that hits. And the fact that there are so many metal benders out there, that Lin Bei Fong is Toph's child who seems to be the, the chief of police or something. That's pretty dope. And I love that for Toph's family. But if, has she just passed on metal bending like, like to Lin and Lin has taught, you know, all the other people who I imagine are maybe earthbenders at, at their core how to metal bend? That, that's so cool. But seeing that statue of Toph, that, that kind of leads me to believe that Toph is no longer in the world as well. And Katara said, you know, Sokka plus a lot of her friends are no longer with her. So the situation seems to be that there is a little bit of a class division between benders and non-benders, which didn't really exist in the last airbender at all. I imagine as civilization has started to advance, it's probably become a little bit more apparent that benders can do more than non-benders, but it, it seemed like it were non-benders that, that were having like this uprising, right? And like I said, it's probably still too early for me to form an opinion on this. Like, where is the root of this issue? You know, and it might be the dude with the mask, right? Let, let me grab his name. Amon, right? And he's got the mask on. Look, I, I get obviously bad guy vibes from this group. Obviously my mind goes to imagine this is like Zuko's child or something, but I think it would be a, a lot more fitting for this to potentially be Azula's child. But I, I don't know if that's possible. I imagine Azula just got locked up. Who even knows what happened to her? But at the same time, it's probably got absolutely nothing to do with Zuko or Azula or any of that. Just when you think of antagonists early on in the show, that's where your mind goes. But I'll stay open-minded about that. Like the fact that they've got a mask on as well. There was that one Fire Nation guy in that trio of crooks that had a little scar across his eye. Maybe that's the only nod to Zuko that's here. But they put a lot of emphasis on the issues, you know, going on in Republic City, right? Like Tenzin can't stay to teach Korra airbending. He needs to be in the city doing what he believes is carrying on Aang's legacy. But I like that once Korra gets there, she sees what's going on. She feels the need as the Avatar to do something about it, which is a really great nod to, you know, the Avatar's role in general. And Tenzin is able to see that. I, I love that for Tenzin. He seems like a really cool character. I imagine he's going to be a bit of a mainstay day as he teaches Korra airbending. But Tenzin realizes it's not his legacy, it's Korra's legacy. I, I, I really like that. And another little contrast, like Korra's just right out there, like in the public giving a speech, like this is what's up. I'm the avatar. I feel like my place is here. I want to make some changes, make things right. Whereas so much of Aang's life was um, trying to hide as the avatar, hide from Zuko, hide from the Fire Nation, even in season three when everyone thought he was dead. So again, we're getting to see a, a very different type of avatar here in Korra. And it's not going to be about, as we go through the books, learning the different types of bending and there isn't that timer that there was in the last airbender at least not yet uh, you know with Sozan's comment obviously that didn't come in uh, until several episodes but it seems like it's the more spiritual side of things like getting connected with that for Korra I'm really excited to see her meet Aang the same way that Aang would meet Roku I think that's going to be really surreal and really cool but you can see Korra has a lot to learn they were saying that she was being kept down in the southern water tribe and apparently that was Aang's orders you know to keep Korra safe so she could learn all the elements and then when she's a fully realized avatar, that's potentially when she would come out and, you know, be the change that this world will now need. But Korra's done what she feels is right. She's already out there. She's seeing the world now, and this will obviously accelerate whatever the, the plot is and what we're going to do. And someone did comment a while ago saying they didn't know how many seasons they were going to get out of Korra. So the antagonists and, you know, the plot and, and what the issues are each season might change a bit instead of there being that one overarching threat of Ozai and the Comet and the War and everything. So we'll see. I'm already getting really good story and character vibes about this. They, they've set a lot up early, which is something I really love in pilots. And it looks incredible. That four-year gap uh, doing absolute wonders for the Avatar series here. And it really matches the more modern theme, you know, much more modern animation. It, it really holds up. Like I was making some comparisons to Arcane. Arcane is obviously an in incredibly unique and accomplished uh, work of animation. But there were a few shots. Even the city was kind of reminding me of Pilto 
over a little bit. It was just very unique and very good. So I'm really excited to see uh, what they do with that as well. But I think that's going to do it for this one. There's probably a little bit more in there, but I'm just really excited to continue watching this show. Like I'm already pulled in, you know, there's something to me about seeing characters like grown up or like in the next generation, like, like from the last airbender, seeing them here, it's really, it always hits for me. I make a lot of Xenoblade comparisons uh, when I can, because it's my favorite video game series ever. So this will only probably hit a very small percentage of people, but playing the Xenoblade 3 DLC and seeing a bunch of the classic characters all grown up in different situations, it was just like the greatest thing ever. So seeing Katara, how she is now, statues of Aang and Toph and mentions of Sokka, it just, man, it just hits, you know? And obviously The Last Embedder is still incredibly fresh in my mind, about as fresh as it gets. I can only imagine how much it would have hit for people seeing this four years later or however many years later. So that's gonna do it. Please let me know down in the comments uh, what your impressions are of Korra, your first impressions, how you perceived the show when it first came out, what did you expect it to be like? Because I didn't really know what to expect and I have thoroughly enjoyed what I've seen on the screen. But I'm gonna leave this one here now. So thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more. And as always, please continue to leave your comments and feedback down below. You know I always appreciate it. And we'll see you all in the next episode of The Legend of Korra.